Let's talk about your idiot league mates one more time before the season kicks off. It's officially September and it's officially draft weekend. Some of y'all already drafted, so I apologize if we're already ahead of the schedule here, but a lot of y'all have drafts either tonight or this upcoming week. So I want to make sure that you stay away from the landmines, man. Fantasy football, it's difficult to choose the right guys. When you get on to pick 24 to choose between the guy that's ranked 23, 24, 25, 26, it's kind of a coin flip, but there are many factors that play into guys that are easy fates. So that's what this video is today. We're going to talk about five dudes that you got to let your idiot league mates draft because they're idiots if they draft them. And then we'll do an honorable mention. Maybe they're not idiots, but I personally am staying away from them. Y'all know what to do. The majority of this list is dudes that are already injured going into the season. This is something I say all the time. Don't find injuries in fantasy football. They are going to find you. Injury optimism is one of like the easiest things to make you a better fantasy football player. Meaning, do not be optimistic about injuries. These dudes are running a billion miles an hour on the field. If a guy is entering the season at less than 100% and he is playing football against dudes who are 100%, the likelihood of him re-injuring what he's doing, re-injuring the thing that was injured in the first place is so much higher. So it's like, yeah, we can't predict injuries, except we have fucking science. So like sometimes we actually can. Why draft risky players early on in drafts when you can simply not? The very first guy that easily comes to mind based on the news that has came out over the last few days is Cooper Cup. Cooper Cup pulled his hamstring about a month ago, and I made a video basically on demand, and I said he drops out of my first two rounds, basically. I think I moved him down to 25, and everyone was like, that's dramatic. And I said, listen, I want to see him practice fully a week before the season leads up. And these are just like word for word, quote for quote, bar for bar, click for click. I want to see him do a full week of practice prior to the season to let me know that he's actually healthy. Lo and behold, he re-pulls the hamstring suffers a setback and now he's day to day he's day to day but he's flying all over the country visiting specialists for second opinions on his hamstring that is a giant red flag so i will repeat what i tweeted this morning i'm filming this on sunday september 3rd at approximately 2 13 p.m eastern time I don't typically make blanket statements like this, but if you are drafting Cooper Cup within the first three rounds of your fantasy draft this year, knowing what we know right now, you are bad at fantasy football. The dude is super injured, and he's past 30 years old. He's not going to recover quickly. I also think the other low-key factor at play here is the Rams, first of all, right? Their, their defense is terrible. They're going to go into a rebuild very, very, very soon, if not like right now. And for the first time in what feels like a decade, they actually have their first round pick this year. So if they're a bad team, that obviously becomes extremely valuable. Their first five games of the season, week one at Seattle, week two versus the Niners, week three at at Cincinnati. Week four at Indianapolis. Week five home against the Eagles. The Eagles, the Bengals, the Niners at Seattle. The only game where you're even like giving them a coin flip chance to win if they are without cup. And we haven't heard word. We don't even know if he's missing week one, but I would be shocked if he's playing week one. I wouldn't be surprised if we see him miss a few weeks, if not three, four, five weeks into the season. And then plus you got a couple weeks ramp up once you're into the season. It's just a giant red flag for me, but it's a coin flip against the Colts, right? Like if they leave the first five weeks of the season, 0 and 5, assuming cup misses a lot of that time, are they going to push him to be back onto the field? Do they look to trade him at the deadline? And maybe that's a good thing. Maybe it's not. I don't know which just feels like a lot of headache action going on right now for Cooper Cup, where you have to pick him extremely early. So I've updated my rankings completely in our draft guide. Our draft guide is available to you right now. If you want to go cop it before your drafts, you can do it in one of two ways. One straight from our shop, bdge.shop, which is full price, $25, but it has our super flex rankings, our one quarterback rankings, our positional rankings, our must draft players, our all fade list, all that kind of stuff for your drafts. So if you want to do no more research, but you just want a beautiful product that helps you through your draft, that is it. Or for a discount kind of price of just $10. All you got to do is head over to underdogfantasy.com or download the Underdog Fantasy app, both linked down below in the description. And when you deposit $10 or more using our code BDGE, so write in BDGE when they give you that little promo code slot, 
wallet ten dollars they're gonna double what you put down on the platform so you can do pickums with us all season long plus you're gonna get the draft guide emailed to you for free and if you need it asap in time for your draft and they haven't emailed it to you one check your spam folder hit us at business at bdge.co and i will make sure i confirm that you signed up for underdog and then i will personally email it out to you before your draft and i don't want to plug for any longer but they also have this 0.5 patrick mahomes free square on the app right now no reason not to hit this let's move on to number two and it's another wide receiver with another hamstring pull it's jerry judy he was not a guy that i was super in on to start the season to begin with because i don't know if i really believe in his talent level yet but now he suffers probably a grade two hamstring strain that's not good grade one he would have been back in a couple weeks they've already pretty much pegged him at four to six weeks which means that's a grade two which also means he will be back intra season anytime a player is coming back in the middle of the season that scares me because the player typically pushes himself to get onto the field before he's ready if this was in june and then he was supposed to be back maybe early august but he doesn't get back until august 27th or something like that doesn't really matter because it's still prior to the regular season but if he's like 80 percent at week three and he wants to push himself back onto the field it goes back to one of the first things i said if you're getting onto the field less than 100 percent against these fucking beasts that are playing at 100 percent your likelihood of re-injuring re-pulling re-whatevering is so much higher these players push themselves they want to get onto the field man so jerry judy is an absolute no-go for me i think you're going to miss significant time with judy the re-injury rate for a dude like judy right now is very very high so he's off my board same thing with Kadarius tony he's been off my board for a while but there was news that came out today and someone in your league is going to get cute and be like no he's playing week one Kadarius Tony's probably not going to play more than like 40% of the snaps in week one. I would be shocked if he did. It's crazy. Kadarius Tony seems to just have 100 minor, every minor injury Kadarius Tony has, it's somehow day to day and somehow he misses months at a time. Every time he injures something, he's out for months, even though it's like the most minor injury ever. This is one of those cases where he hasn't practiced over the last like month and a half, yet he's going to be good to go for week one. Color me skeptical. They have so much going on in that offense between Kadarius Tony, Justin Ross making the team, second round rookie, Rashi Rice, Sky Moore, all the talk about him breaking out of camp. MVS clearly running with the ones. Justin Watson's going to get some snaps, obviously. Kelsey is the dog there. They got three running backs now that they like between Pacheco and McKinnon and Clark. I'm, I'm, Nope, I am hands off on Kadarius Tony. Number four, and no one's really drafting him, but someone might try to get a little cute here too, is Alan Lazard of the New York Jets. I was in on Corey Davis as the wide receiver too there. Turns out he said, Nicholas, you have arguably never been more wrong than what you're saying right now. He retired, but that doesn't mean Alan Lazard's going to be good. Alan Lazard had every chance to be the wide receiver one in Green Bay last year with Rodgers and just chose not to. Like if you look at what his season stats were last year and now you put an alpha in front of him, what are those stats going to end up being? I don't even know if Lazard is a two there. Like Randall Cobb is going to get more work than we care to see. Miko Hardman's going to be a playmaker in that offense. I think this might be a slow, like non pass happy offense, and all the targets probably go to Garrett Wilson. So don't draft Alan Lazard. I don't need to waste more time on that. The Philadelphia backfield is a curious one as well. I have steered clear off them. I think they are without a doubt going to use a committee between Swift and Penny and Kenneth Gainwell. Swift's sixth, seventh round price is a little bit greedy for me. Everything I've heard out of camp is that they want Swift to be the guy, but what the guy means in Philadelphia is a lot of different things. I don't know if they mean they want Swift to be the goal line back. He is likely not going to be the two and four minute back. I think Kenny Gainwell is the one that's going to be in in very obvious passing situations, two and four minute drills. DeAndre Swift, if he can stay healthy, will probably be like the early down guy that maybe they run screen passes to. Penny will sprinkle in. Maybe he's on the goal line because he's bigger than those other guys. But Rashad Penny is probably the one I highlight as the one I want complete hands off on because I don't know if he's getting any sort of valuable touches, right? We look at Penny as like the bruiser here, but they want Swift to be the workhorse. He is running with the ones, but even being that is risky given the other valuable touches that are going to Kenny Gainwell. So I'm going to be honest, I think you should just completely let your teammates go in on the Philadelphia backfield. And I would probably say the same thing with Kansas City. I have kind of run scared away from Isaiah Pacheco. He's missed a lot of time, and I feel like he's kind of opened the door to not a Clyde Edwards Hilaire resurgence, but like enough playtime to be fucking annoying. Would it surprise anyone if Clyde is a starter in week one? If Thursday night football comes, right? And you hit that Patrick Mahomes over 0.5 yards, you're feeling good. You're feeling great, right? You're like, I got a free square and underdog promo code BDGE when you sign up. I'm feeling fantastic because I know I'm about to make money. And then Clyde steps onto the field and you're like, what in the fucking tarnation are we doing out here? Don't be surprised when that shit happens. So I still like Pacheco better. Obviously, I'm drafting him straight up, but don't be surprised if Clyde is so annoying this year. A few more I want to throw in here is honorable mentions that I'm I'm personally sticking off of. Travis Etienne, I'm looking at four for four ADP. So it combines 
combines underdog, other paid platforms, but it also combines ESPN and Yahoo and CBS and factors them into it. Takes the average here, right? So ADP might be higher or lower depending on how sharp your league is. But right now, ETN is a third round pick and Tank Bigsby is going to be a big factor in this offense. So ETN will not get workhorse role. This there will be a very, very pass happy offense, in my opinion. Running backs can command targets, but if you're not like C-Mac, if you're not Eckler, when you have an offense like Calvin Ridley and Christian Kirk and Zay Jones and Evan Ingram, most of the targets are going to go down the field. You don't have like Trevor Lawrence is not a dump off artist. He's a dude that wants to use his arm and throw the ball down the field. He's not someone who loves to just fling it over to the running back and let him do his thing. So ETN, I'm skeptical about his pass catching work, skeptical about the goal line work there. Will he make big plays and have really big weeks? Of course he will. But overall in season long, I'm kind of just staying away where I have to decide sit start. DeAndre Hopkins is another one I've been off of him since he went to Tennessee. This will not be a high volume passing offense. Traylon Burke is now back practicing ready for week one. I almost think I'd rather have Burks than D-Hop. Maybe that's a stretch, but the fact that I'm even thinking about it lets me know that I don't want D-Hop at his current fourth round price. Terry McLaurin still not practicing. That worries me a lot. He has dropped down. I think the majority of drafts I see now, Jahan Dotson goes over Terry McLaurin, and I don't necessarily blame people. McLaurin's a dude, again, injury optimism is one where people are going to be like, he's so talented. I don't care about the injury when he gets back, et cetera, et cetera. Turf, toe, ankle, whatever he's really dealing with is something that could absolutely linger for the entire first half of the season. Terry would have to drop pretty significantly for me to want to actually click the draft button on him right now. And in my rankings, which again, you can get on the draft guide, promo code BDGE, when you go to underdog fantasy, Terry McLaurin's a dude that is below Jahan Dotson now in my redraft rankings. If something happens where we see him get back at practice and he's a full participant for the next like five days, I will update it. And you guys who have the draft guide will get the updated version of it. Terry scares me. Javonta Williams, despite him playing in the preseason, still scares me. Still not a guy I'm willing to put like fourth, fifth, even sixth round capital in. I'm off there. And then Jonathan Taylor. Jonathan Taylor is is, is scary. I made a video uh, about Jonathan Taylor. Well, not about him, but just like the most recent news. And Jonathan Taylor went on the pup list. So he's going to miss four games. The biggest question mark here is like, there's very much an open door for him still to be traded, all right? The, the trade deadline is not till October, November or whatever. And the one that the Colts put on him was an imaginary trade deadline. So that could absolutely still happen. The problem is we don't actually know what his health is. You know, you have doctors who are like very well might still be injured. We've got doctors that are like, he could be faking it so that he gets straight, et cetera. And we've got people in the YouTube comments with like letters instead of numbers in their username that are like, I know he's faking it. Like, okay, you're a fucking doctor. Everybody settle down, settle down. So JT, there's just a lot of fuckery going on right now. I just took him in a dynasty startup at the 310, which I'm fine with, but I would suggest probably peeling back the curtain a little bit, peeling back a little bit on the enthusiasm for JT this year. We don't know where he's going to play. We don't know when he's going to play. It's a mess. He might just be trying to get the minimum games in so that it satisfies his contract. If he's at 85%, maybe he decides not to push it and play that way because he doesn't want to get injured for an upcoming contract negotiation, all that kind of stuff. So a lot of risk going on in there. Those are five to 10-ish players that you need to let your idiot league mates draft. So make sure you're subscribed and stay tuned for those. Most importantly, though, if you want to support the brand, if you want to support us, if you've been following us and watching us all summer long, and this is your way of showing that you appreciated it, again, Underdog Fantasy, promo code BDGE, when you throw $10 into there, not only are they going to double it, but you're going to get the draft guide emailed to you for free, and you've got the Mahomes free square, 0.5 yards in week one. What are we talking about?